Hey y'all, hey, it's JJ Conway. Welcome to Building Wealth Together, where our goal is to help you walk in abundance and leave a legacy. It's Saturday morning, so you know what that means. It's time for Juice with JJ, where we talk about things that make you go, hmm. So last Juice with JJ, we talked about how to know you're the kind of person who gives, gives, gives to others at your own expense. It was part two of a series. So if you missed it, please go to buildingwealthtogether.com and press podcast to download episode 85. Actually, get episode 82 as well. That was the first part of the series. So in episode 82, we talked about how highly sensitive people tend to help others, even if it hurts themselves, because they tend to attract people into their lives who need help. This is because, one, they remind you of someone from your past, and either you want to fix the past or you have great sentiment for that person. Two, you're a rescuer, often because you only feel self-worth when others need you or when you're helping someone. Or three, you're too focused on the goal instead of the person, and you don't see that this person is no longer worthy of you helping them to the goal. Now, most of us will say, this isn't me, I'm balanced and I have good boundaries. Or you might tell yourself what I told myself is, oh, I'm a good person, I'm not just helping others to feel better about myself. That's the lie I used to tell myself. What I did in this series is I started listing my seven indicators that you have fallen into this trap of helping others at your own expense or to your own detriment. I did this because these are tricky and I invite you to thoughtfully meditate or even authentically journal about each of these. We've already covered the first four in the previous two parts of this series. One, you have nothing for yourself, but you always somehow have something to give to others. Number two, you spend a ton of money or time chasing after the next course or the next person who's going to help you succeed, but you haven't fully used the tools right in front of you. Three, your primary love relationships, spouse, kids are precarious, but you keep taking in more strays and projects rather than doing the hard work to fix your relationship with your spouse and your kids. Oh, I was so guilty of this. Number four, you don't charge for your services, not because it's a strategic move, but because you just don't feel comfortable asking. You don't know how to ask. You don't want to appear scammy. And ultimately, you don't feel like you're worth it. I had all the degrees certifications, even experience, but I didn't feel worth it. Look, the truth hurts, but if you want to build wealth, then you have to acknowledge the things that are holding you back. I'm sharing with you the things that were holding me back. And if you want to learn how to move forward in life and get past the past, then please, please, please go to buildingwealthtogether.com and register as a student in our upcoming Self Image Rising class. So now let's continue with number five. Number five, a little poignant for me. You beat yourself up inside more than once a day. Now, I'm, I'm at a point in my life where if I beat myself up more than once a month about something, I take note of it during my prayer and meditation time. But some of you have never lived without hating on yourself once an hour, once every five minutes. That's no way to live. Not only are you hurting yourself internally with such negative self-talk, but you are now tying up emotional energy and thought processes that could be harnessed to create a better future, execute your vision, strengthen your family, fulfill your calling. This is why the enemy fights us so heavily in our minds. It's the number one way to stop God's people from moving forward. Can you remember a day a whole day when you didn't call yourself mean names in your inner talk? I remember the first time. Embarrassingly, it wasn't that many years ago. The very first time that I said to myself, I love who I am and what I do. I had just had a client follow-up who had become financially independent five years after calling me. When we spoke, she was unemployed and her husband only had disability. Yet fast forward five years and now they were financially independent, home paid off, able to live on his disability and her part-time work. I helped her and I've helped thousands like her. But I was so busy beating myself up for being too goofy, not black enough, not white enough, any number of things. I even had a client request a refund because he felt like I wasn't charging enough. (laughs) I was losing sight of the fact that despite all my many faults, I was changing lives. 
So when she called back to celebrate, it caused me to think about everyone else I'd helped. And that's when I said to myself, I love who I am and what I do. And it caught me by surprise. Y'all, I wasn't used to feeling good about myself. I don't think I'd ever in my whole life said, I love myself. How about you? When was the last time you actually said you loved yourself? Not in counseling, not as part of an empowerment class or some personal growth thing where you're told to say that. I mean, like when was the last time you spontaneously said you love who you are? When was the last time you thought to yourself, I love what I do? If it wasn't in the last week, then you need to be in my upcoming self-image rising class. With the energy you put into dogging on yourself, into thinking negative thoughts, to exclaiming how dumb or stupid you feel you are, all of those things that we tell ourselves internally, that energy would be better used towards creating the life you crave. All right, number six, people you helped are getting ahead, but you're not, and they're not even giving you shout outs. How depressing is that? I've had it happen many times in my life before I started realizing that I was giving too much of myself to others. You help someone change their life, whatever that means, right? Money, clout, you open up doors for them, you taught them something they needed to know, you coached them through their limiting self-beliefs, and they moved on, and they're doing amazing things, but you aren't. They could be referring people to you because you helped them, but they're not. Or if they do, they want the free gig. Others come to you, but you feel like they're getting more than you are out of every exchange. You pour your heart into them and you get nothing back in return. Not even a thank you. Man, I used to give financial coaching and sometimes financial planning at much lower cost than market rate because I truly care. I care about you. I want you to be successful and I'm excited to be a part of your calling. I can talk to you about your money plan and your business plan all day. It is genuinely fun for me. Problem is, I have bills to pay and I have Bible study to prep for and I have kids to play with and I have a husband who needs some of my time too. And so when I make the choice to set aside all those obligations and relationships and responsibilities to help someone else get ahead, what I'm saying to my subconscious and theirs is that I'm not valuable enough to take care of what's important for my long-term benefit. You ever hear that old saying, you teach people how to treat you? When you're pouring into someone, unless it's your time tithe back into the community, it needs to be an equal exchange to be healthy. So for example, a couple months ago, you couldn't find rubbing alcohol, Lysol, antibacterial products, things like that. I happened to be in the store when they opened up a new case of Lysol and I, and I bought a bunch of it. I bartered some to a local soap maker for some soap, hand sanitizer, and some things like that. He kept offering me more stuff and I felt like he'd already given me way too much. I, I didn't want to take advantage of him, right? And he didn't want to take advantage of me. We both felt like we got way more out of the exchange than the other. And we even joked about it at the end, how you know this negotiation went well when both of us felt like we got more than the other. He laughed and I went on my way. You know, I probably should have asked for an extra bottle of hand sanitizer, but I had no idea how, how scarce they would become. <laughs> when I thought about, as I was walking away, I thought about how this is like, our client interactions should be. Even if I'm giving to you for free, I should still be getting a blessing out of the interaction. So I invite you to review your past month of activity. Did the people you helped appreciate you? Did they say thank you? Did they give you a shout out? Or did they make you feel like all they want is for you to work, work, work for them without any public acknowledgement? Now I'm not saying everything we do needs to be shouted from the rooftops. But I remember the freedom of cutting loose several nonprofits I was building websites for that really didn't treat me right. When you first start to get that, is this an unequal exchange kind of feeling? I encourage you to evaluate why am I helping or providing that service? Is it because I genuinely care? Is it because I feel obligated? 
Did someone guilt trip me? Even if we started off wanting to help, sometimes the relationship changes and we don't notice, but our subconscious notices and we begin to harbor that resentment deep inside long before we notice it on the outside and long before we start snapping at everyone around us who wonders why we lost it at this little thing. It's time to take back our lives and that starts with taking back our time and energy. Now, sometimes we're going to provide a service and we know it's going to be an unequal exchange. You know, I always get a little chuckle when I'm working the soup kitchen and I'm dishing out food to the homeless and the person in line is criticizing me for being a sellout to the man because I work for a living and I get a little chuckle out of it and I realize they do think they're better than me and they think they've got one over on me. And in a sense, I guess they did kind of get one over on me because they're getting free food, right? But seriously, though, that's not really what I'm talking about. Okay, you can go into some situations and you know it's going to be unequal. But I remember a particular nonprofit website that I worked on for eight years. I poured blood, sweat, and tears into that thing. Almost every available free moment I had went into that thing. And they wouldn't even allow me to put my name on the website as the webmaster. And when I finally had enough, they turned around and gave it to someone else and paid them $30,000. And that person did a horrible job and they came back to me and I was like, nope. <laughs> and they still keep coming back. It cracks me up. I'm like, no, y'all treated me bad for eight years. Like, I'm just not going to invite that negativity into my life. To tie this back in with the last point, one way I minimize the impact of how my giving heart normally tends to attract people who only want to take, take, take without giving or appreciating in return is to charge a high fee for my services. At least this way, I've got 500 or 1,000 of your thank yous sitting in my bank account, even if you never say it directly. All right, everybody, that's going to wrap us up at points five and six today. Uh, we're going to save point seven for next week's Juice with JJ because it is a pretty insidious comment. I'll bet most of us have told ourselves this at one point or another, and I firmly believe it's a lie straight from the pit of hell. You don't want to miss this, so make sure you like, subscribe, and if you have an option on whatever platform you're listening on or watching on to hit the uh, notifications button, make sure you do that because you do not want to miss next week's Juice with JJ. I'm JJ Conway. Y'all take care and be blessed. If you enjoyed this podcast, make sure you subscribe at jjconway.org. Now go walk in abundance and leave a legacy.